Okay, so hi everyone. This is a video lecture on uh, the stages of moral development, which is the last lesson for the midterms. Okay, so uh, I'll just present my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, guys, meron din tong kasabay na uh, dito, video that I sent to the respective Google Classroom. So you can also watch that video before nyo to panoorin para medyo may konting background na kayo dito sa discussion ko dito. Okay. So the stages of moral development was developed by the psychologist, by American psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg. Uh, this is founded on the cognitive development of John Piaget. Di ba yung mga psychologists before Nung mga around 20th century, meron silang iba't ibang theories about the development of human beings' behavior based on different aspects, no? iba't ibang, iba't ibang aspect ng, or iba't ibang, anong dito? Parts ng, ng human mind. Okay, si J cognitive development yung sa kanya. We also, uh, I've also discussed before sa UCSP ko yung sa so psychosocial theory yung kay Eric Erikson. Okay. And then, usually, it goes through certain stages. Okay. So, pagdating naman sa moral development, pagdating sa morality, pagdating sa ethics, meron ding psychological theory that encompasses yung, yung kung paano nag-develop yung morality ng isang tao. Cognitive siya in nature kasi ang focus dito is yung moral reasoning process. Yung paano, nag paano ka nag-reason out, paano ka nag-iisip when pagdating sa moralidad. Okay? Pagdating sa mga bagay na kung mag decision ka kung tama o mali ang isang bagay or ang isang action, paano, nag paano nagpo-proseso yung isip mo? Okay? Paano nagpo-process nag yung mind mo? So, kaya siya cognitive in nature. So, uh, meaning this is not entirely applicable to those people with cognitive disabilities, di ba? Yung mga merong psychological or cognitive uh, challenges. Okay? Kasi this one is about this one is about the, the moral reasoning process of a person who has the normal cognitive development. Okay, so I hope medyo nagigasin niyo yung part na yun. Siguro, di ba, you're already done with GEC1 sa understanding the self. No, na, baka medyo na-touch itong mga ganitong, ganitong topics. Okay, and also, uh, this one is a, quite an overlap on two fields. No, yun nga, psychology and ethics. So before, di ba, yung when we discussed culture and morality, overlap naman yun sa anthropology and ethics. Okay, so ngayon naman, because we're talking about moral development, we're talking about how the human mind works when it comes to making moral decisions. This is an overlap on the field of psychology naman. Okay, so... Ayan, for Kohlberg, moral development also proceeds in stages. He developed his theory by posing moral dilemmas to people of all ages and analyze their answers to find evidence on the, of their stage in the moral development. So if you have watched yung video na binigay ko dun sa, sa Google Classroom, it's also on YouTube, no? Merong isang sikat na moral dilemma na binigay si Kohlberg dun sa mga respondents niya. Okay, it's called the Heinz Dilemma. H-E-I-N-Z. Parang Heinz Ketchup. <laughs> okay. So, dilemma siya. So, if you haven't watched it, eti, ang story niya, basically, si Heinz, so isang tao siya, si Heinz, siya yung agent, siya yung subject, uh, kailangan niya, uh, meron siyang asawa, si Clara. Okay. Ngayon si Clara, she gets very sick. Tapos, uh, ang sabi ng doctor, isang drug lang yung makakapagpagaling kay Clara. It's a new drug, bagong drug siya, bagong discover or bagong invented na drug. Kaso, dahil bagong yung drug, when they went to the pharmacies, yung sobrang mahal nung, nung drug, let's say, dun sa video, it's $10,000 eh. Okay, so let's say $10,000. Magkano yun yung peso? Half million? I'm not sure. Ata. So, let's say $10,000. And hindi siya, ayaw siyang ibenta ng pharmacies no, for that 
for for a lesser price. Okay. Hindi yun afford nila Heinz at saka ni Clara. Kahit pumunta sila sa banko, mag-loan sila, iba't ibang banks na yung pinuntahan nila para mangutang, ganyan. Hindi pa rin sila kayang pautangin ng worth $10,000. So let's say, uh, let's say wala nang ibang paraan. Okay. Kasi minsan pinipil pa natin, eh, pumangutang sila sa mga kamag-anak nila, ganon, or sa mga kakilala. Or let's say wala sila mga kamag-anak, wala sila mga kayo, wala na yung ganong option. Ang, ang, gabi, ang sabihin na natin is yung, ang, Hypothesis natin in this situation is that hindi talaga nila kayang i-afford yung drug para gumaling si Clara. So it's like the choice of Heinz is to either just steal the drug and then yun, ibigay sa asawa niya or not steal the drug and just wait for Clara to to get worse. Yeah. Okay. So yun lang yung choice, no? So, medyo pasimplehan lang natin yung dilemma. Huwag natin bigyan pa ng maraming choices, no? Or courses of action. Yun lang. Kasi, uh, what, what I would also like to put emphasis on in this lecture is that itong theory ni Kohlberg, this is not about the consequences. It's, it's not about the results. Wala siyang pakialam, actually, kung ano yung magiging decision mo. Would you steal the drug or not? It doesn't matter kung ano, yung, kung ano yung magiging decision mo at the end. It doesn't matter kung you would steal it or you would not steal. What matters in this theory is paano ka naka-arrive dun sa decision mo na yun? How did, you, how did your mind work? No? Ano, yung, ano yung reasoning mo? Ano yung processes mo? Paano, ano yung dinaanan ng utak mo? Why did you arrive at that decision? It doesn't matter kung ano yung decision mo. What matters is why is that your decision? Parang ganon. Okay, bakit yan yung decision mo? So, when he posed this, this dilemma to various client or to various respondents, to his various uh, subjects, iba't iba sila ng reasoning process. No? Kahit na parehas rin ng decision. Kunyari, yung isang tao, sabi niya, he would steal the drug. Yung sabi, yung isa naman, he would also steal the drug. Pero magkaiba sila ng dahilan kung bakit nila isi-steal yung drug. And yun yung, yun yung importante, yun yung ina-emphasize dito sa theory ni Kohlberg. Bakit mo isi-steal yung drug? So magkaiba sila ng reasoning process. Okay. So, yun. Okay. So, cognitive nature, Kohlberg's theory focuses on the thinking process. Ayun nga. Okay, how, paano, paano ka gumagawa ng decision kung ano ang tama o mali? Okay, it doesn't matter kung, kung ano ang tama o mali sa'yo eh. Parang it's like, uh, paano ka naka-arrive sa decision na yan na ito yung tama at ito yung mali? Okay, so the emphasis is how one decides to respond to a moral dilemma, not what one actually does. Okay, so ang framework niya, meron siyang six stages uh, tapos yung six stages na yun, hinate into three levels. So, bawat level, mayroong tigda-dalawang, uh, bawat level, mayroong tigda-dalawang uh, stage. Okay, so level one, stage one and two, level two, stage three and four, and then level three, stage five and six. Okay, so for level one, we have the pre-conventional level. So, morality is externally controlled. Okay, meaning, merong external, merong factors outside the self, outside the person, na nagko-control kung bakit ito yung decision niya, kung ano yung tama o mali. Okay. Stage one, so under the level one, pre-conventional level, stage one is about punishment or obedience orientation. Behavior is determined by consequences. The individual will obey or the individual would think that something is right or something is wrong depending on the punishment, okay? So, itong stage one and two, sa psychology, parang ano tayo, negative and positive reinforcement, okay? So, stage two naman, instead na punishment, the person is looking forward for a reward, okay? Behavior is determined, again, by consequences pa rin. Yun nga, depende siya sa, sa ex external na consequence, eh. okay? The individual focus focuses on receiving rewards or satisfying personal needs, okay? So let's say, let's give an example, okay? Um, so stage one, for example, punishment. A person only does something morally, you know, or decision niya sa isang bagay, eh, tama o malito kasi depende sa punishment, okay? So let's say, ang isang bata, 
Itong bata ay um, nagmura siya. Ganyan, di ba? Pag nagmura siya, nagsabi siya ng bad word, pinalo ng nanay niya yung bibig niya. Ganyan. Huy, basta may huwag kang magmura. Ganyan. Okay. So, hindi na siya magmumura kasi takot siyang masampal, for example. Or takot siyang mapitik yung bibig niya. Ganyan. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, yung bata, uh, hindi na siya magmumura. Hindi dahil sa tingin niya, mali talaga yung pagmumura. It's because takot lang siya dun sa punishment. Okay. Sumusunod siya, and obedient siya, not because he or she thinks that that is what is really right, na yun talaga yung tama. By principle, ito yung tama. Hindi ako dapat magmura. Ganyan. Okay. Hindi ganun eh, di ba? Ang dahilan niya, bakit hindi siya magmura? Kasi natatakot siya na pag narinig siya ng nanay niya, mapipitik yung bibig niya, masasaktan siya. So, yung idea niya nung tama o mali is based on the punishment. Okay? Based dun sa sumusunod siya kasi mayroong negative reinforcement. Parang, bakit dun sa tapat ng Walter hindi ka tata, hindi ka tatawid sa hindi ano dun sa hindi tama to. Hindi marami pa rin pala natawid dun. Eh <laughs> say for example, dun sa dun sa ano, dun sa walang pedestrian lane, hindi ka tumatawid kasi mayroon manghuhuli ganyan. Pero pag wala na yung manghuhuli, tawid pa rin. Okay. So ibig sabihin, ginagawa mo lang yung tama kasi you are trying to avoid a certain negative Uh, consequence sa'yo. Okay. So, that's stage one. Okay. Stage two is you you want a reward. That's why you do something. Okay. Not necessarily because you think it's right, but because you are, but because you, you want something in return, kung maga. Um, another example ito, mga bata ulit. Kasi itong level one, na-observe na actually ni Kohlberg, na usually, usually yan, not always, usually, ito yung it ganito yung level daw ng mga bata ganyan. So, let's go sa reward. Kunyari ba yung nyari may kapatid ka or pamangkin na magpapa-vaccine magpapa, ganyan, papaturok ganyan. Okay. Eh, ayaw niya. Okay. So, uutuin mo, di ba? Uutuin mo siya na, oh, pag matapang ka, o kaya pag hindi ka umiyak, pag pumayag ka, kakain tayo sa Jollibee pagkatapos. After, libre kita ng ano, may happy meal pa, may la, may la, happy meal. Ay, ano ba yun? Makdo yata yan. <laughs> Ayun ko. Kilip. Whatever. So, yun. Utuin mo ng mga kung anong reward. Ganyan. Okay. So, siya. Ma-entice siya. Ganyan. So, sige. Tiisin niya. No? Tiisin niya yung, yung turok. Ganyan. Tiisin niya yung injection. Kasi gusto niyang makuha yung reward ng, ng Jollibee. So, yun naman yung stage 2. Instrumental purpose siya. No? Na kaya niya ginagawa kung ano yung tama. No? It's because meron instrument niya yon, tool niya lang yon, or meron siyang ibang purpose kung bakit niya ginagawa yon, which is yung reward. Yun yung, yun yung goal niya, eh, yung reward. Okay, yun yung purpose niya, yun yung objective niya, yung reward. So, yung action, instrument lang niya, or tool lang niya, para, para makuha niya yung reward. Okay, kaya siya instrumental purpose orientation. Okay. Next. Let's go to level 2, conventional level. On the level, on this level naman, uh, the person moves outside from himself or herself. Tapos, what's important to him or her is our ma mga social rules, no? Conforming in the society, no? Meron pa rin siyang self-interest, pero it's motivated by ano yung magiging image niya sa society. Ano yung magiging effect nun? Interested pa rin siya sa sarili niya, pero kinoconsider na rin niya ano yung magiging effect nun sa lipunan. Okay? So, the individual strives to support rules that are set forth by others such as parents, peers, the government, in order to win their approval no? and maintain social order. So, for level 3, I'm sorry, stage 3, it's a good boy, nice girl orientation. No? You do something because gusto mong gusto mong gusto mo ng approval ng ibang tao. Okay, you want to be considered as a good person, a good boy or a good girl no sa sa paningin ng ibang tao. No, for example, sa sa nanay mo, ay hugasan ko to, hugas maghugas ako ng pinggan. Parang may gumagawa noon. Eh. <laughs> ay maghugas ako ng pinggan kasi ano para ano mabait ako kay mama. Ganyan. 
Parang ako yung mabait na anak. Ganyan. Okay. So, yun yan. Ito yun. Hindi mo yun consciously iniisip. Na. Hindi mo yun iniisip na, hindi mo yun iniisip talaga na gano'n na para, para mab- ako yung bida kay mama, ganyan, or bida kay papa. Hindi mo yun iniisip consciously. Pero minsan, may mga gano'n tayong subtle, may mga unconscious or subconscious natin na reasoning eh, na gano'n eh. Na, um, uh, kunyari, may nag-away sa classroom, no? yung ay, hindi ako makikisali diyan kasi mga ano yun eh mga pag nakisali ako diyan oh, awa yan ni eh, mabait ako parang ganoon hindi mo yan although hindi mo yan ganun consciously iniisip ng ganoon pero parang ay pag may ay away ayaw mo makisali because you're you're a good person and you think an away yung away na ganung klase is something bad and ayaw mo nang ayaw mo nang bad na image para sa sarili mo Okay, because you're you're a good boy or a nice girl, parang ganon. Okay, so that it's a, it's still about yourself, di ba? Parang yung ego mo kasi it's about your ego. It's about your your interest for your own for your own self. Pero kasi when you talk about ego, it's about how people perceive you. Eh. So you want to be perceived as a good person. You want to be perceived as a good as a good. Uh, as a good boy, okay, on, on that particular action. Okay. So, level four naman, it's about law and order. Okay. Uh, here, you you have, ang, ang isip mo, you do something because sobrang tight ng, sobrang tight ng authority ng batas, no, for you. Okay. So, social rules, and laws determine behavior. The individual takes into consideration a larger perspective, that of societal laws. Moral decision-making becomes more than consideration of close ties to others. Parang, lagi kang, lagi mong nire-respect kung ano yung authority ng batas. Okay. Alam mo yung, yung alam mo yung klase ng reasoning na, uh, Sundin na lang natin yan, sundin na lang natin kasi hindi naman yan ma-approve or hindi naman magkakaroon ng ganyang batas kung hindi rin naman sa ikabubuti okay, ng nakakarami, parang gano'n. Or yung klase ng reasoning na okay lang may masacrifice na ganitong, may masacrifice sa ganitong tao basta nasusunod ko ano yung batas, nasusunod ko ano yung rule. Kasi yung rule eh, dapat walang exception sa rule, parang gano'n. Okay. Sobrang... Sobrang in reverence ka, no? Sobrang ginagalang mo kung ano yung established na rule, no? You, you always follow the rule because the rule is something or the, the the law, the rule is something that provides order in the society. And hindi yun dapat hindi yun dapat ma ma disrupt, no? So what you do is you always follow the rule, okay? So ganun, uh it's it's still about so ang ang, ang ano mo ang ang tawito, yung motivation mo to do something is about the society okay it's a, you you're trying to move outside yourself about what's what's in it for me you're you're trying to move outside that kind of reasoning you are now trying to to you're now trying to put harmony in the society parang ganun so ang level 1 is about the individual. Ang level two, itong conventional level, is about you no know, uh, conforming to to society, to social rules. Okay. Next, level three, post conventional or ito yung keyword dito, yung principle, the principled level. So dito, you go beyond your society. Morally is def- uh, morality is defined in terms of abstract principles or absolute principles, absolute values like yung mga, yung mga, yung mga universal values that we discussed natin before. Okay. That apply to all situations in society. The individual attempts to take all the perspectives of all the other individuals. So for stage five, social contract orientation. Ah, uh, this one, medyo mahirap, medyo ano to eh, medyo confusing to dun sa stage 4 eh. Okay. Dito, you all, you you now follow yung exception to the rule. Like, okay lang sa'yo na meron ng exception to the rule. Okay. Um, may mga ba, may mga times na parang, sa ting, dito sa, sa stage na to, sa social contract orientation, 
dito may mga times na okay lang sa yon na baliin yung rules no or isirkom navigate yung rules for the sake of a certain principle parang di ba ang 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 rules ginawa sila what for justice for harmony okay. pero kapag yung rules or yung law ay nakaka offend na ng ibang tao okay parang sa tingin mo okay lang mabend na yung rules for the sake of that principle no that that you want to to follow okay so for example yung kay yung kay Heinz at saka yung kay Clara parang pwede mo maging reasoning dito yung kaya si sa stage five ay so sorry kaya rin sa stage four ka ikaw si Heinz would you steal the drug or not pero pag nasa stage four ka pwede mo sabi na I will not steal I will not steal because the law should be should be preserved no iyon yung batas eh masama ang masama ang mag mag entay ito ang mag nakaw eh okay so what you do, so hindi dahil sa masama ang talaga mag nakaw but because kapag nag nakaw ako that's that's disobeying the law okay so pag nasa stage 4 ka pero pag nasa stage 5 ka parang may magkaroon ka ng idea na ay itong batas na to na bawal magnakaw is working against my wife no kasi pag nagnakaw ako pag hindi ako nagnakaw mamamatay siya so i can bend the rule i can bend the law magnanakaw ako because ang kailangan kong gawin is 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 save yung buhay niya okay life is so meron kang principle okay so nasa nasa principle level siya okay may mga batas ginigalang mo yung batas pero kapag yung batas is already something that offends people no yung batas ay hindi na hindi na uh, hindi na justifiable okay you think it's okay to 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 break it down parang ganun so kunyari yung batas is about just is for justice no, to prevail in the society but what if the law is no longer promoting justice okay so what you do is to to break down the law or the rule so that you can still achieve justice so kaya siya nasa principled level kasi you want to achieve y- yung principle mo ng hustisya yun yung yung value na ng hustisya yun yung yun yung pinanghahawakan mo not necessarily the law so kung nasa stage 4 ka you would follow the rules you would follow the law no for to maintain social order but for stage 5 ang concern mo is ano yung value na pinopromote ng law na to or ng rule na to okay so i hope na explain ko siya nang maayos guys medyo abstract na kasi tong tong edge abstract na ano na, yun, na ano, concepts or ideas na tong part na to eh okay but again if you have questions no of course you you just ask me you just chat me minsan may mga klase kayo na ganun na nagcha-chat sa akin na ma'am kasi po pag ganito nalilito ako ganyan ganyan so no no problem no mas maganda no that you that you ask me questions no lalo kung medyo nahirapan kayo intindihin tong lecture video na to kasi well, hindi ko maintain yung questions niyo ngayon eh kasi asynchronous na Oh, okay. Yung yung ethics mo is based on a certain absolute moral principle. Na you only follow, really follow it talaga. Even if it is something, kahit na meron siyang mga negative consequences sa kahit kahit na kahit na uh, madadamage ka or kahit na merong mga negative consequences on yourself, you know, you still try to follow this. Your, yung yung ethics mo yung principle no na gusto mo it's because yun yung pinaka pinanghahawakan mo 
Okay. Sobrang konti lang daw yung mga nakaka-achieve nito. Like, ano ba, sina, ano lang, sina Buddha, ganyan, Jesus. No? Yung parang kaya nilang isacrifice yung sarili nila. No? Kaya nilang isacrifice yung life nila for a greater purpose, for the greater good. Okay. Eh, di ba karamihan tayo, we, we human beings, no? usually we are... We are selfish. We have our own selfish interests. So according to Kohlberg, sobrang konti lang daw yung mga nakakasyong ito. Mahatma Gandhi, no, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr. No, itong mga taong to na, or Mother Teresa, no, itong mga taong to na, they're guided by this by this absolute moral principle. No, by And this guides their ethics in their life. So kahit na, kahit na mayroong Uh, nasa sacrifice yung buhay nila no for this greater purpose no in the society or a greater purpose for the world okay lang sa kanila okay so parang sila si according to Kohlberg itong mga ganitong klaseng tao sila lang yung naka-achieve nitong itong stage na to okay kasi they they really move outside themselves they move outside the society what their ethics is guided by a certain universal absolute principle or value. Okay. Naalala ko yung ano eh, yung sa sa Vietnam, mayroong isang Buddhist monk na sinilaban niya yung sarili niya. No. Sikat 'yon. Nakalimutan ko yung pangalan mo kasi iba yung kakaiba yung pangalan niya, I forgot his name. But basically, sinilaban niya yung sarili niya tapos naka-meditate lang siya. It's like the power of the mind, parang mind over matter, mind over body. Grabe, sobrang lupit nun. Ganun. Pero at the same time, so ano yun, ano yun kasi ni, protest, protest siya against sa government of the time. So parang ganun nun, meron siyang absolute principle na to the point na kahit mag-suicide siya, no? kahit mag-suicide siya, it, but if it's for the greater purpose, it's for the greater good of the society or for the greater good ng, ng mundo, okay, okay lang na i-sacrifice yung self. Parang ganun. So, it's it's on the principle level. Okay. So, of course, itong si Kohlberg, it doesn't go, it doesn't, it did not proceed ng walang criticisms. Na lahat naman ng theories, no, meron lagi mga counter, ano, mga counter theories sa kanila. And that is what makes it interesting, di ba? Kasi kung, 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 ah, kung yung mga theory is laging wala namang ka-counter, No, it, it's we're not sure if it's really right. Okay, so when this mga criticisms no against or mga arguments then against Kohlberg's theory. So una, una raw, actually there are three. Unang criticism is that may pagka elitist yung yung theory ni Kohlberg kasi mostly most of his respondents no ay mga lalaki. Okay, and mga white, no, mga white na lalaki. Okay, so he was saying na may pag-elitist siya kasi he was saying na mas maraming mga lalaki, mga white na lalaki daw, yung, yung naka-achieve or naka-achieve ng higher stages, no, nakakarating sa higher stages kaysa sa mga babae or kaysa sa ibang mga races, no. But in the first place, his theory, no, yung mga respondents niya, medyo meron, parang filtered na rin eh. Okay. So, pangalawa, uh, another argument against uh, Kohlberg's theory came from another psychologist, no, Carol Gilligan. She wrote a, she wrote a book entitled In a Different Voice. Okay. And accordingly, kay Gilligan, uh, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na higher yung yung moral reasoning process daw ng mga lalaki kaysa sa mga babae. Kasi daw, ang mga babae, yung moral reasoning process nila is different from from men. Women value relationships more. Women value connections more than than men. Okay? Di ba parang sa psychology or sa, sa isip, sa utak, di ba? Meron tayong left brain, left brain, right brain development. The left brain is about logic, mathematical skills, ganyan, critical thinking. The right brain is about emotions, feelings, art, ganun. So parang merong theory na ang, guy, ang mga lalaki, ang males, 
they have the tendency to use their left brain more. They have the tendency to be more logical than women, okay, makapag-isip more on critical thinking than women. But, ano to, ah, generalized to, ah. Hindi ko sinasabi na, porke babae ka, hindi ka na masyadong gumagamit ng left brain mo. That's, that's not how it is. Okay. Parang, ano lang, general na observation lang. Okay. Generalization. Okay. And then, for women, no, women seem to have the tendency to use their right brain more. You know, they're more, they're more emotional. You no, know, they're they they make the, their decisions more based on their feelings. You no, know? okay. So, and according to Gilligan, that's not necessarily something inferior. Hindi ibig sabihin nyo, merong mas mababa, merong mas mataas. You no, know, merong mas magandang way of thinking, merong mas less way, less or inferior nga, mas mababang way of thinking. Magkaiba lang kayo ng way of thinking, pero hindi ibig sabihin na merong mas mababa, merong mas mataas. Okay? Kaya, ito, kaya yung libro niya, ang tawag is in a different voice. It's not something superior or inferior, it's just something different. Okay? Iba lang. Okay? Magkaiba lang. Okay? So, male and females, no? males and females reason differently Okay, but not necessarily someone is higher or someone is lower than the other. Okay, so yon. Okay. And then the last, ito et, pala, sorry, ito yung, ito et, yung, ito yung, ito yung libro niya. Okay. Uh, eh, yung last criticism, hindi ko na, hindi ko na ilagay dito sa, sa PowerPoint presentation ko. Ang last na criticism kay, dun kay Colbert is yung idea na, Human beings seem to have different more pwede kang mag-go into different stages no depending sa context okay kasi pinili ni Colbert di ba para classify mo ano yung more reasoning process mo ngayon nasa ikaw ngayon ako 28 years old let's say ako ay nasa stage 4 Kunyari, nasa law, yung moral reasoning process ko ay nasa stage for law and order orientation. Ganyan. So parang kay Kohlberg, dun ka na. No? At sa ganyang, sa ganyang age, yan na yung stage mo. Okay? Ganyan ka na mag-reason out. Okay? Pag nakarating, pag, as you age older, no? as you grow older, tsaka katataas. No? Parang ganun. But according to some critics, that's not how it works. No? Ikaw ay, ikaw ay nasa, uh, ikaw ay nasa iba't ibang stages, depende doon sa moral dilemma na kinakaharap mo. Okay. Baka mamaya sa ngayon, yung moral dilemma is, ang decision mo lang is parang nasa stage one lang. No? Di ba kunyari, ganun. parang ang, sa ngayon, kap dahil mababaw lang naman yung, madali lang naman yung, yung dahil madali lang naman yung dilemma, Either stage one or two lang ako. So parang ganun na. So it depends on the context. It depends on the moral dilemma. Kung anong stage yung gagamitin mo dun sa moral reasoning process mo. Okay. It depends on the situation. Kung anong stage, no, yung, 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 paano ka mag-isip or paano ka mag-decide. Okay. Kung ikaw yung presidente, for example, no, siyempre, parang possible na yung moral reasoning process mo ay nasa stage 5, stage 6, or, or mga nasa higher stages. No? If you have to deal with with situations ng, ng war, for example, war ng Philippines versus China, kunyari, huwag naman. <laughs> diba, yung moral reasoning process mo, pwede nasa stage nasa higher stage, no? Pero kung isipin mo, ano kayang kakainin ko? Tinola o ano? O bangus? Ganyan. Okay. So, so pwede na dun ka sa mas mababang stage, di ba? So, sinasabi kasi ni Colbert na parang na, nasa fixed na stage ka na, which according to some critics, no, hindi ka, hindi ka pwedeng ma-fix lang sa isang stage, eh. It depends on the moral dilemma or it, it depends on the moral context that you are currently facing at that particular time or that particular situation. So, ayun, parang is it, kaya siya kritik kasi si, si Kohlberg, isa lang naman yung or piling-pili lang yung dilemas na pinresent niya dun sa sa mga respondents niya. So, yun, yun yung naging kritik sa kanya. So, ayun, that's, that's 
the theory of moral development by Lawrence Goldberg. So I hope you guys have somehow understood something from it. Again, if you have questions, okay, feel free to chat me. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to stop this recording now. Thank you.